Shalom. I want to start off by saying Kalalal Yamla, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahushai, Bahasham Rika Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Mills for teaching us the truth and who rule well. Peace and citations unto the Akim that is spread around the four corners of the earth, spreading this word in sincerity and truth. Shalom to the hopeful elect. I'm the brother Kwata Zayan, coming back through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahasham Yahushai with another lesson, with another video. And Lord willing, this video is edifying. Gone. So, I'm gonna name this video. There's something very spiritual about this. As you can see, you have this sodomite, Lil Nas, Lil Nas X. He is now bringing out a new album, which is called Montero, and it's due September 17, 2021. So, he decided in his perverse mind to make pictures like this and put it on the internet uh, I don't know if it's for a magazine and whatnot but this is what he portrays you see he portrays himself as being pregnant and being ready to give labor to this abominable music that he's pushing you know that is in that coincides with Esau Edom his image and Esau Edom his his agenda which Esau Edom is the the name of the so-called white man is his biblical name so yeah man this is what he portrays this is what he pushes this is supposed to be his album which is in his belly i think it's maybe on people magazine because i see that uh, emblem this is on his uh, twitter account you know As Eve with her blonde hair being vulgar and nasty as usual. See him in the background. I don't know if this is supposed to portray the Garden of Eden or something like that. Elton John, all these sodomites, of course. And all this wicked satanic vibration that they're pushing. Of course, you got the Roman pillars. Because we're living in the in a Roman society, the Roman revived society. You see? It's all subliminal messages right in front of you. So maybe I missed something and, uh, so the Akiam can put it up later on. But yeah, man, so there's something very spiritual about this. And we're gonna dive into it and dissect it because what he looks like right now is a woman that is about to have pangs and the scriptures speak about that but let's go into that word pangs first bang is from the 1520s a sudden uh, paroxysm paroxysm of physical pain acute painful spasm a word of unknown origin not found in a middle uh, English perhaps is the related to prong okay so that doesn't matter but the point is sudden paroxysm of physical pain that is what he's uh, portraying that he's a woman you know and that's gonna have pangs after a while So, if you go, you simply look up pangs, then you get certain scriptures, you see? And let me start with uh, Jeremiah 50, verse 43. So let me start at Jeremiah 50 verse 40. As Yahweh overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, say Yahweh, Basham Yahweh, so shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. Behold, the people shall come from the north 
and a great nation, and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth. Counsel that that um, that great nation from the north. That's speaking about Russia, and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth, meaning these other nations that are going to join Russia in destroying Babylon the Great, which is speaking about America. They shall hold the bow and the lands. They are cruel and will not show mercy. Their voice shall roar like the sea, and they shall ride upon horses. Every one put in array like a man to the battle against thee, O daughter of Babylon. And who's that daughter of Babylon? That's speaking about America nowadays. Because this, 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 this letter of Jeremiah was written to the captives of Babylon that shall live in the latter days. It's speaking about us, speaking about the Israelites, because we are those captives. We are those cap exiled captives. Because we are exiled from uh, our, 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 our country, which is Israel, and we are taken captive in the nation by these other nations, by Esau Edom mainly. You see? So this is Jeremiah 50, verse 43, the point. The king of Babylon had heard the report of them, and his hand waxed feeble, and anguish took hold of him, and pangs as of a woman in travail. Gone. So that's what is going to happen when a woman is in travail, when a woman is in pains. You know, there's not going to be any strength or any might in her. You see? So that's why the scripture often uh, refers to men as women in pangs, women's in travail, women given labor. You see? Because if you go into that word, let me see. Pangs, which is Hayal, Salakya Hayal. And the outline of biblical usage says pain, agony, sorrow, a writhing, anguish, writhing of fear, anguish. And the strong definition says a throw ex, uh, expectant of childbirth, pain, pang, sorrow. You see? You're going to be in pain, thus you are going to be feeble. You're not going to have any strength because if you look at a woman that is having uh, birth pains, that is giving birth, she is only focused on the pain and getting the baby out. She doesn't have any strength in her, in her arms, in her legs, in her anything. You see? So let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 21, starting at 1. And we're going to read down to 10. Because this is also uh, an example of what a woman in labor, having labor pains is like. So this is Isaiah 21, verse 1. The burden of the desert of the sea as whirlwinds in the south pass through. So it cometh from the desert from a terrible land. A grievous vision is declared unto me. The treacherer, the treacherous dealer dealeth treacher, treacherously. And the spoiler, spoil it. Go up, O Elam. Beseech, O Medea. Uh, Medea. All Media, Salakia. Let me read it again. Go up, O Elam. Beseech, O uh, Media. Medea. All the. <clears throat> all the sighing thereof have I made to cease. Therefore, all my loins filled with pain. Pangs have taken hold upon me, as the pangs of a woman that travail it. I was bowed down at the hearing of it. I was dismayed at the seeing of it. Come, so <coughs> this is a, a vision that Isaiah had. Let me see. Isaiah 21. And it's entitled Elam and uh, Medea. Media, <laughs> so like Elam and Media defeat Babylon. So this is speaking about how Elam and the Medes, because you had first the 
Babylonian Empire and then you had the Medo-Persian Empire and they were taking over the Babylonian Empire was taken over by the Medes and the Persians which the Persians or Elamites which go back to Iran nowadays so this vision that he saw it made him so weak and feeble that he was like a woman in pangs so this is Isaiah 21 verse 4 my heart panted fearful as fearfulness affrighted me the night of my pleasure had he turned into fear unto me prepare the table watch in the watchtower eat drink arise ye princes and anoint the shield for thus for thus had Yahweh said unto me go said a watchman let him declare what he seeth Khan, and we are those right those, those, those watchmen of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai Yahweh Tazah Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai has uh, appointed certain watchers that are supposed to be set upon towers set upon high to be the overseer to see the danger coming and blow the horn to warn the people you know that are inside the the, the towers and the and the watchtowers you see inside of the city so isaiah 21 verse 7 and he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen a chariot of asses and a chariot of camels and he hearkened diligently with much heat and he cried o lion my lord i stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime and i am set in my ward whole nights and behold here come a chariot of men with a couple of horsemen and he answered and said Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the graven images of her gods he had broken onto the ground. Oh, my threshing. So this is what happened in the past to when, when, when the Medio Persian took over Babylon. But this is going to happen again. Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai is going to overthrow this Babylon the Great, which is America, which is in rulership of Esau Eden. The Most High is going to also make him to, to, to fall and break down all his images and break down all his, his gods, you know, which are no gods besides him, besides Jehovah, you know, because they say that they are gods, but they those are images made with hands and uh, graven by the craftsmen of, 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 you know, people that craft stones and people that craft uh, wood. But they are no powers next to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, which created the whole heaven and earth. So this is bound to happen again. Isaiah 21 verse 10. O my threshing and the corn of my flower of my floor, that which I have heard of Yahweh power of hosts, the power of Israel have I declared unto you. And that's what we are doing. We as watchmen, we are declaring the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai to our people. You know, if we see danger, if we see something's happening, we are going to put this in in our letters, in our epistles, which are these videos that we put on YouTube nowadays. You see, that's how we warn the people. That's how we warn the flock. See? Let's take a, another example in Daniel 10, verse 16. And 17 and behold one like the similitude of the sons of man touched my lips then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that stood before me O my Lord by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me and I have retained no strength Gone. so this is a vision that uh, let's see let me read for Daniel 10 verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, as we were going into, the Medes and the Persians that took over Babylon. So in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar. And Belshazzar is the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. And he was the only, he was the last king to reign before 
the, the Persians took over, the Medes and the Persians. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. And so Daniel, he saw a vision, right? And in this vision, he saw, let me see. It was an angel, and I believe it was either Gabriel, Kabaria Allah, or Michael, Micah Allah. Bear with me for a second. Let me go to my Bible. Let me see what is uh, written there. Daniel 10. Daniel 10 and 16. Yep. Here. It's Michael. Daniel 10 verse 13 but the prince of the kingdom of Persia which stood me one and twenty days but lo Michael Michael Allah one of the chief princes come to help me and I remain there with the kings of Persia you see so Michael Allah which is the archangel he uh, was helping uh, Daniel in this vision and that's also going to happen pursuing to Daniel 12 and 1 you know, in that day, Micah Allah shall stand up and fight for the nation of Israel. And what time is that speaking about? That's speaking about the time of Jacob's trouble, which is pending, impending right now, you know. So, reading on, Daniel 10, verse 17. For how can the servant of this, my Lord, talk with my Lord? For as for, as for me, straightway... There remaineth no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. You see? So when you are in distress, in sorrow, in pangs, in pain, you have no strength. That is the point that I was trying to make. It's the same thing what happened with Daniel that he saw in this vision. He became dumb. He became all, all, you know, without strength in his hands. Let's go to Isaiah 26. Let me start at 16. I'm going to read on down till 21. This is Isaiah 26, verse 16. O Yahweh, in trouble have they visited thee, they poured out a prayer when they, Salakia, O Yahweh, in trouble they visited thee. They poured out a prayer when thy chastising was upon them. Khan, and that's what Yahweh Bashem Yahushai does. When the Most High puts you through chastisement, when you're, he's chastening you, then you are going to pray unto Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. That's when he's trying to. He's good, making you go through that fire, you know, just like how gold and silver is refined in the fire. That's how he is refining you. When he sees something is off with you, when he sees that, you know, okay, now it's time for you to change and to put off the old man to go to the next level. That's when he's going to start to chastise you. And then you are going to seek Yahweh Shem Yahushai in prayer. You see, verse 17, like as a woman with child that draweth near the time of her delivery is in pain and cried out in her pangs, so have we been in thy sight, O Yahweh. We have been with child, we have been in pain, we have as it were brought forth wind, we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth, neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen. You see, so that's how we were. We are like a woman that is in travail that has no strength so when you don't have any strength in you to change your situation to change what you are doing what are you going to do you are going to cry out to Yahweh Yahushai. you are going to send up prayers you know and that's what he wants he wants him he wants you to acknowledge him that he is the one that brings you high and brings you low you see 
So reading on. Thy dead man shall live, together with my dead body shall they arise, awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. That's what's going to happen when Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai is going to send his son, Yahweh Shai. You know, the dead in Yahweh Shai are going to rise first. You see? Because we can't save ourselves. Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is going to save us. Yahweh Shai is going to save us because his name means he deliverer. He's the, our salvation. He's going to be the one that's going to break down Esau, Edom, his kingdom. He's going to break down Babylon the Great. And then we are going to be uh, made great and put in glory just like how Yahweh Shai is glorified. You see? And this is going to happen. Isaiah 26, verse 20. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers and shut thy doors. And what is this speaking about? This is speaking about these um, UFOs, unidentified flying objects, which are the chariots of the Most High. You know, now you have much more sightings than you had 50 years ago, than you had 100 years ago. So something is brewing, and it's Jehovah Bashem Yahushua is making himself ready to make his move. You know, he's letting Esau make moves on the left-hand side. So on the right-hand side, the chariots and the angels are making themselves ready also to make moves. And we are going to be, at the time that the ICBM missiles are going to drop, these intercontinental ballistic missiles, the, when this thermonuclear fire is going to hit, we are going to need salvation. We are going to, we are going to be beamed up in these chariots of the Most High. And we are going to be protected. We are going to be shielded from the thermonuclear fire. You see? So that's what it means. Come, my people, enter into thy chambers, enter into the chariots, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, after the indignation, after the, the nuclear fire, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. You see, so the Most High is gonna, he's gonna come out of, of out of his place, meaning he's gonna bring forth judgment upon the inhabitants of the earth. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. God, so he that uh, killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. So the ones that were killed, killed, and their blood was shed, they equally have to shed the blood of the one that spilled it. You know, which is Esau Edom. He is the one that is going to get this uh, judgment, you see, because it's his kingdom. So that's going to be our salvation, the chariots. God, this is John 16, verse 20. John 16, verse 20. Fairly, fairly, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful but your sorrow shall be turned into joy so you're gonna be sorrowful but it's gonna be for a moment you know and the world shall rejoice and ye shall be sorrowful that's what's happening right now the, the world is is enjoying themselves you know people that are joined on to esau but we are sorrowful because we are in the house of mourning we are not in the house of mirth we are not the ones that are enjoying the society. No, we are sorrowful because as it says in Ecclesiastes 1 and 18, uh, the more wisdom you get, the more sorrowful you are, roughly paraphrasing. But your sorrow shall be turned into joy. Why? Because we are going to reap in the time of harvest. We are going to reap. We are going to be uh, fishers that are going to turn into hunters. You know, And then righteousness is going to rule. So this is uh, John 16, verse 21. A woman, when she is in travail, had sorrow, because her hour is come. And that's how we are right now. We are in sorrow because we are seeing that the hour is coming, that uh, the, the, this child is going to be coming out. You know, so the pains are increasing. The sorrow is increasing. We are increasing so much knowledge in these latter days. But that's also making us more sorrowful and more fixated in the spirit that you know, when you go to your job, it's getting harder to put on that, that mask and that facade that 
you are enjoying your work and that you are having a good day. Stuff like that. Because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembered no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And so as soon as the child is born, then the woman forgets all the pain that she had right up until that time of the childbirth. And in like manner, it's going to be for us that these, these chastising, these sorrowful times, these vexations that we go through, it's going to seem very little when in the end the kingdom of heaven is going to be and we are going to be joint heirs. Onto you see, so we are going to forget all these things that we went through. Verse 22, and ye now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy, no man take it from you. Gone. And if I read this, the, the, the first that I'm thinking about is in Second Ezra, when Yahweh Shai is going to put a crown upon your head. You know, how, how, how joyous you're going to be. You know how, how, how happy and how wonderful that is going to be, how beautiful that is going to be. You know, you're going to forget all the things that you went through. <laughs> See? Let's go to Micah 4 and 6. Because this is what we're going to do in that time also. Yeah, Micah 4, verse 6. And I'm going to read on down to 13. It's Micah 4 and 6. In that day, said Jehovah, will I assemble her that halted, and I will gather her that is driven out, and her that I have afflicted. So this is speaking about the nation of Israel. Because we are the one that halted. If you go into that word halted, it means limp. We are, we are limp right now. We are not in our, in our full force we are the ones that are captive and exiled you know and we are driven as it says driven out we are exiled out of our land we are being afflicted by these other nations you see for seven and i will make her that halted a remnant and her that was cast far off a strong nation and the lord shall reign over them in mount zion from henceforth ever for even forever gone so from her, which pursuing to Jeremiah 6 and 2, says that he, I have likened Israel unto a comely woman, the daughter of Zion unto a comely woman. Let me just get it. Uh, Jeremiah 6, verse 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. See? So going back, now you understand that this her, that how Basham is speaking about is speaking about Israel. So he's gonna set upon the the, the mountain, he's gonna set Yahweh Shai, which is gonna rule forever and ever. Verse 8 And thou, O tower of my flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, even as like unto thee shall it come. Even the first dominion, the min the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. You see, so we are gonna have dominion over everybody and everything here upon earth. Now, why dost thou cry out loud? Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? For pangs have taken thee as a woman in travail. Gone. So, Israel. As stubborn and backsliding as they are, as we are, they constantly wanted a king. But Yahweh said he is their king. But they wanted a king. They wanted princes. And now, in the end, you know, uh, Babylonian captivity, Medio Persian captivity, Greek captivity, Roman captivity, Roman revived captivity. Everybody has been above and over us. We wanted a king, right? So now the Most High is asking, like, is there not somebody uh, within thee that 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 uh, uh, can help you, that can take you out of this situation? You are as a as a woman in travail, you know. <laughs> Verse ten. 
be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail, for now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, which is the world, and thou shalt go even to Babylon, which is Babylon the Great, which is America, where we're right now. You know, that's where uh, uh, the valley of the shadow of death is. That's where the truth has been brought back to our remembrance, starting with the head apostles of GMS, you know. So the Most High, he made good on his promise that he was going to uh, spread it, spread us, scatter us across the, the, the field, which is the earth, which is the world, and he's going to bring us to Babylon again with ships. It's Egypt again with ships, which means to be in straits in bondage. There shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. So if you go into that word redeem, it means to buy back. So there, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is going to deliver you in America. You know? Because when the bombs are going to drop in America, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai is going to send the chariots and the angels and Yahweh Shai to redeem the remnant of his people, which goes into the 144,000 of his elect men, of the, of the governing body, and of the elect, you know, the women and children that are going to be saved in Babylon the Great, you know. Now also many nations are gathered against thee that say, let her be defiled and let our eye look upon Zion. And that these are that's these are the nations when they look upon the Israelites, which are, which are the so-called blacks, Latinos, the Native Americans, they enjoy it. They're like, hey, you know, they're looking at us like, hey, let them be defiled. Let them suffer. Let them uh, be low, you know, for all the, these things that they did to us. Because we had these other nations on the submission when we walked in the sight of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. You see? So they feared us. But now that we are in a lower state, they're like, yeah, let them be defiled. You know? Verse 12. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither understand they his counsel. For he shall gather them as the sheaves into the, into the floor. You see? So these nations, they don't know what's waiting for them. Because the Most High doesn't deal with them. The Most High only deals with the descendants of Jacob, the Israelites. So he's going to gather them and he's going to plead with them in the valley of uh, Yahweh Shapat, which is in the Middle East. You know, verse 13, Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion, for I will make thine horn iron and I will make thy hoofs brass. And thou shalt beat in pieces many people. Meaning, the Most High, He's going to give us spiritual powers to break down these other nations. You know, the remnant of His people, the elect of His people, the 144,000, the fishers that are going to be made into hunters, they are going to trash down. They are going to beat down these nations. Thus said the Bible, you know. And if you go into that word, that word horn, it means... Uh, ray of light you know so that goes into spiritual powers it says Quaranak Quaran and the outline of biblical usage says rays of light so the most high is going to bestow spiritual powers upon us upon his servants and they are going to beat down many people. And I will consecrate their gain unto Yahweh and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. And so the substance that they have, that these nations have, that they have put, put together, is going to be consecrated unto Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. See? So that's what's going to, that's the, the pangs that we are in. We are in the pangs that this. This, this kingdom is going to tumble down and that we are going to take the kingdom. You know, those pains, those, those sorrows is what we have right now. As for Esau, these are his sorrows and pangs. Jeremiah 49, 
verse 22. And it reads, Jeremiah 49 and 22, Behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Basra. And at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. You see? So Esau, Edom, he's going to be in fear. He's going to be, there's not going to be strength in his hands when Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai is going to bring that destruction for his ass, you know, when he's going to send Yahweh Shai, which is not going to meet them as a man, you know, because he was persecuted, he was he was uh, crucified in the time of the Romans, and we're still in the time of the Romans, you know, that the Romans are at the head, the, that the Romans are ruling. So when Yahweh Shai is going to come, these Edomites, they're going to shit their pants, you see? And also, all those that are joined unto him. These are the nations that are joined unto Esau, Edom, and the two-thirds of our people, the sinners of our people that refuse to change and to, to submit themselves unto Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. This is what's going to happen to them. Isaiah 13. Isaiah 13, verse 8. And they shall be afraid. Let me see. Yeah, let me start at 5. This is Isaiah 13 and 5. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. Speaking about the land of America, Babylon the Great. So they are going to send their, their arrows, which are their missiles, to uh, Babylon the Great. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt. And they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. And so these, these people, these Edomites, and these two-thirds of our people that are joined unto Esau Edom, that want this kingdom to, to, to stay and to not end, they are going to be as women in travail. They are going to be... Their hands are going to be faint and feeble. <laughs> so they're going to be shook when Yahweh Shai is going to come here to bring forth judgment. Verse 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, cruel both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Come, see, so this is what I was talking about, that the two-thirds of our people, the sinners of our people, they are going to be destroyed and made desolate the whole land and they're gonna um, eat these missiles they're gonna be tormented by Yahweh because who are sinners sinners are people that transgress the law and who have been given the law the the Jacob descendants the Israelites so the people that have the law and don't want to follow them they are considered sinners so he's gonna destroy the sinners uh, thereof you know, because these other nations, they're like unto spittle, unto the Most High, but the Most High, He deals with Israel. And because two-thirds of our people don't want to repent and take hold of Esau, Edom, His images, which is shit like this, you know, they are going to be destroyed, therefore. Gone. So with that, I hope this video is edifying. And I want to say, Kal Halal Yamla, Yahweh, Basham, Yahushai, Basham, Rekha, Kodash, Shalom, Akyam.